He was Britain's longest serving consort, a man who could have gone to the very top of the Royal Navy, but instead chose to sacrifice his career and dedicate most of his adult life to the woman he loved. Born on the Greek island of Corfu, he ended up here at Gordonston School in Scotland, his family having left Greece when he was just 18 months old due to political instability. It was in 1934 that he first met his future wife when they attended the wedding of his cousin, Princess Marina of Greece and the Duke of Kent, who was an uncle of Princess Elizabeth. Philip and Elizabeth had in fact shared a unique connection since birth. His mother, Princess Alice of Battenberg, was a great-grandchild of Queen Victoria, just like Queen Elizabeth's father. In 1939, 18-year-old Philip joined the Navy. War broke out and Philip was sent to sea where he became first lieutenant on HMS Welp in the Indian Ocean, rescuing British pilots shot down by the Japanese. Two years after the war ended, he married Princess Elizabeth. Having renounced his Greek title, the king made him Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. In 1952, he was promoted to commander, but his naval career came to an end on the death of his father-in-law, King George VI. It was left to Philip to break the news to his wife while in Kenya, on a tour of the Commonwealth. At the Queen's coronation in 1953, the Duke took an oath to serve his wife for the rest of his life, swearing to become her liegeman in life and limb. Together, they had four children, Charles, Anne, Andrew and Edward. But with his naval career over, what to do outside family life? Within four years of leaving the Navy, he founded what he is perhaps most famous for. The main purpose of the scheme is to help boys to find activities which will give them pleasure and satisfaction the Duke of Edinburgh Award Scheme, which millions of young people have taken part in. He remained active himself. The Duke plays at back. He's easy to recognise in the match with number four on the back of his shirt. An accomplished polo player. 191 for five. A keen cricketer. Perhaps unsurprisingly, he loves sailing. And in his 50s, he turned his attention to carriage driving. Prince Philip's interest didn't stop there. The Duke was a qualified pilot and he immersed himself in almost 800 charities and organisations, most notably as president of the Worldwide Fund for Nature, long before the protection of the environment became such a hot topic. But his family always came first, and never more so than in 1997, when his grandsons William and Harry lost their mother, Princess Diana, in that Paris car crash. Later that same year, when the Queen and Duke celebrated their golden wedding anniversary, his wife paid him this tribute. He is someone who doesn't take easily to compliments, but he has quite simply been my strength and stay all these years. And I and his whole family, and this and many other countries, owe him a debt greater than he would ever claim or we shall ever know. Reflecting on their long and successful marriage, the Duke also paid this compliment to the Queen. I think that the main lesson that we've learned is that tolerance is the one essential ingredient of any happy marriage. And uh, you can take it from me that the Queen has the quality of tolerance and abundance. <laughs> Into the new millennium, and though looking more and more frail, the Duke appeared as determined as ever to continue his royal duties, and never without a sense of humour. Pay attention, because I'm now going to see the world's most experienced placard veil in the <laughs> In May 2017, though, just a month short of his 96th birthday, Prince Philip announced he'd be retiring from public life. Um. At his last official public engagement in the forecourt of Buckingham Palace, he saluted the Royal Marines, of which he was the Captain General. Public appearances after that were few and far between. The Duke looked every bit his 96 years during the Remembrance Sunday service a few months later. The following spring, he underwent a hip replacement. Within weeks, he was back on his feet and seemingly in full spirits at Harry and Meghan's wedding at Windsor Castle. In January 2019, the Duke was involved in a serious car crash near the Queen's Sandringham estate, from which he, remarkably for his age, emerged unscathed. Somewhat reluctantly, he gave up his driving licence and with it, the independence he had always cherished. But still, there were more family weddings to enjoy and an ever-expanding family. On them and his adopted country, he leaves an indelible mark. A moderniser in the royal household whose appeal transcended the generations, from those who, like him, lived through the war 
to the millions of young people who benefited from his award scheme. A man who, above all else, gave up a promising naval career to serve his wife, Queen Elizabeth II, our longest reigning monarch.